Greetings and salutations, and welcome to the Project 1999 EverQuest Classic Server starting from Absolute Scratch Guide, which tells you how to do just that. Now, firstly, to get to where I am, the character creation screen, you must follow the Getting Started Guide on project1999.com. You can see the link for it in the description below. And now, starting from scratch on the Project 1999 EverQuest Classic Server, is quite the daunting task, especially if you're new to the game, so you don't know how to play, or if you do not know anyone to help you get started. Classic EverQuest is a challenging game where there is absolutely no hand-holding whatsoever, but I assure you it's the kind of endeavor that you get out of it what you put into it. The time and effort it takes to get started is well worth it for the classic challenging gaming experience, as well as the very strong player community here on the 1999 server. So here we are at character creation. Now, you have no money, no equipment, no friends, or anything on the server. So how do you get started? Well, the first thing you can do is create a character, of course. Uh, for your very first character, the question is not really which class or which race to play. The question is where. Location is always the most important thing. Starting near East Commons is very important because East Commons is the primary location for player commerce. There is no auction house in Project 1999. This is classic. If you want to buy or sell items to or from players, you have to actually interact with them. And this is done in the tunnel in East Commons, so it's very best to get started where you want to go in the first place. So, which races start near East Commons Tunnel? It's a short list. Humans, Dark Elves, and Half-Elves. That's it. Don't worry if you lack interest in playing one of these races. This character will exist simply to get you started, to get your first plat rolling in, and to get some of your first gear. You don't have to play this character to a very high level. I'm guessing maybe around level 20. And if you do like the character, then keep playing it. Great. If not, don't worry. Uh, it's going to be a farming character, pretty much, uh, for low-level things. For this guide, I'm going to pick Dark Elf, since their starting newbie zone is very good for a player starting from scratch. And actually, Halflings should get an honorable mention here for race selection. They have very good racials, hide, sneak, and infravision, and can run a few zones over from Misty Thicket. Just when you get there, don't forget to bind, because when you die, you go back to Misty Thicket and have to do that long run all over again, because this is classic. So, I'm going to pick Dark Elf. Now the question is, which class should I be? Hmm. Firstly, you don't really want to start off with a magic using class. So, casters and priests are out. Uh, they are going to largely depend on their mana. Which will slow you down because you must sit to regenerate your mana once you have expended it to defeat your foes. Also, spells cost money that you don't have. And what about pet classes, you might ask? Well, magicians don't get a pet until level 4, and that costs money in reagents to, to cast. Uh, I think they use Malachite. The level 1 necromancer pet costs money to buy, and also requires reagents as well, bone chips. And collecting and selling bone chips is basically one of, going to be one of our main activities, so being a necromancer is kind of a counter to that. As for hybrids, that they don't get spells till level 9, so for your paladins, rangers, and shadow knights. So until level 9, you're, you're going to be very, uh, very less efficient than a pure melee class. So, what are we left with? We are left with bard, monk, rogue, and warrior. I, re I recommend highly the Bard, because you can park the Bard in the East Commons Tunnel to be a mule to buy and sell things. They are great for mules because they can sing their run, sing their run speed song and never be encumbered, no matter how much weight they are carrying. Monks are good, except that they have weight limit requirements that affect their armor class. Rogues are good too, but they are a bit squishy, meaning they die very easily. Uh, they are more uh, geared towards being offensive. And since I have a bard already, and bards cannot be dark elves, and therefore it would be difficult to do this guide, I'm going to choose the warrior 
for the remainder of this guide. So warrior, dark elf warrior. Now we can um, up in this set faced area. We can choose the vast array of eight faces for dark elves here on Project 1999. And I am going to, I like this guy with the green eyes, we're going to go with him. He looks very um, like a stoic warrior type. So dark elf warrior. Now let's talk about stats. Generally I like to dump all of my starting points into one stat, depending on the class. Uh, you can read guides on the wiki to do that, and of course the link to the wiki is also uh, in the description below. So for warrior, I put all points into stamina for the hit point bonus. If you're making a bard, you should put all points into dexterity for the decrease in missing notes, meaning uh, you'll fail to sing your songs. For the monk, you want all points into stamina for the hit point bonus, and for the rogue, you want all points into strength for the damage bonus. So I am just going to right click on stamina here and dump all 25 points into stamina and then hit the next button. And that pretty much covers everything on this page. So that brings us to religion. For religion you are always safe for choosing agnostic. But if you want to role play or wear cultural armor, you can certainly pick a deity just be aware that religion affects NPC faction all over Norath and can hinder access to certain areas at certain times. Religion can never be completely hidden from NPCs. They will always calculate how your religion changes your factions with them. So for a first time character, I highly recommend Agnostic. That being said, I'm going to make a Dark Elf Warrior of Enerok because I plan to eventually use the cultural armor of the Tyrdal. Inarok, the Prince of Hate. Followers of Inarok include nearly the entire Dark Elven race, who regard him as their father. They believe that hate is a creative force, or rather the creative force, in the universe. Creativity is born of destruction. Love and kindness are tools for those too ignorant to know what they want, or too cowardly to do what is necessary to obtain their ends. It is only through the total disdain of one's enemies that one can give that one can gain true power over them. Pity and mercy have no power when confronted with contempt and viciousness. It is the honest belief of his followers that if they were to hate strong enough, they could destroy all of Norath. Yes, very interesting. My character is very much into hate, being a believer of Inarak. So that comes to naming. Now I tend to pick role-playing names for my characters. I tend to use a naming generator, say for example uh, a drow naming generator, and come up with a simple name. You don't want to be too complex or too cute. Uh, use strange characters because in the classic EverQuest you have to literally type out someone's name to contact them. So you want to keep it simple. Something like Relan... no... Relanar. Sure. Alright. So we are ready to begin next. And I submitted my character and my name has been accepted which means that no one else on the server picked this name which is good. That would be difficult to tell us apart. So now once we load in here the first thing we're gonna need to do is to destroy the discord book in your inventory. You do not want to turn it into the priest of discord who is going to be standing right in front of you. Doing so turns on your PvP flag and turns your name red, making you able to attack and get attacked by other red players at any time and anywhere. So that's a PvP thing, but the real issue is that red players cannot group with or get buffed by or get healed by any other non-red players, effectively making your character a solo only character. Now that's not bad if you really want PvP, there's actually a Project 1999 red server dedicated to PvP, uh, which is beyond the scope of this guide, so there's going to be information on that on the wiki if you're interested in PvP. But here we are, we've popped into the world. You can see right on schedule, right in front of the Priest of Discord, and many people, many people, uh, do turn this book in to the Priest, and then their name turns red, 
and then they find out later that they can't group and so they have to restart over so best thing to do is just destroy the book and we are going to equip our short sword and we also have some food and water and a note let's see what this note says we, the Indigo Brotherhood, are the children of Inarok. He has blessed us well with hate. Take this note to Siloxia Quinox at the Cauldron of Hate. She will help train you to serve the will of Inarok. So they're basically telling me to go to the Warriors Guild and turn in this note. I will get a little bit of experience and a little... Uh, I think I get a chest piece for the warrior. So, kind of the backstory of a character, which you can fill in, is basically you were handed a reference to join the guild of the class that you had picked. So I picked the Warrior Guild, so the note says go to the Warrior Guild and by handing in this note you join the guild. So that's what we're going to do. So this is Nariak. Note well. It's gonna have some really funky fluorescent colored graffiti which the Dark Elves happen to be into for some reason. There we go, that's our first example. So we want to make our way over to the Warrior's Guild, which I know exactly where it is. We're going to pass this armor place. We're going to pass this forge house, which is actually where the jeweler crafters live. And here is the Warrior Guild. We're going to skip going through the middle here and go right down the side door which I think should lead us right to where we want to go. Here are some, looks like warrior trainers. Now we are looking for... Siloxia Punox. So, she's probably around here somewhere. Ah, there she is. Hello, madam. Now she's walking around, which is kind of annoying, having quest NPCs walking around, but this is classic. To make them stop, you can hit the H key, inhale them, and then you just simply hand him the note. And you get some glorious trumpets and chest piece, which is probably, yes, an old training tunic, some dingy, moldy, stained tunic. But the good thing about it is it does have armor class, and that's three armor classes having better than none. So. The other reason why you want to go and see your trainers, I'll use a different trainer since they're not going to walk around, is that you want to train sense heading. This is very important. You don't want to forget to train sense heading. Because there's no compass in Project 1999. This is truly emulating the classic experience. There's no compass, there's no map there's only sense heading to figure out which direction you are facing. So spend one point into sense heading and you're going to save your remaining points. So basically every level uh, let's fix this UI here. So every level you have these five practice points. So I'm level one so I get five. So I want to lock this into place. So I want to go down here on the list and train sense heading once and I have four practices remaining, so I'm going to save those to use later. And you can see now in my list here, I do have sense heading, and my rank is awful, and my value is one. You can see on the bottom here, you have become better at sense heading one. So you might be noticing that my user interface looks a bit different than yours, and that's because I'm using a UI mod called Duxa UI link to that is also in the description. Just follow the little guide and put the files in the appropriate place. And then all you do is type in here forward slash load Duxa UI, Duxa UI and hit enter and it will load all these UI elements which I find to be a bit cleaner than the classic ones. And you can move your windows around however you like and I've already set up my UI to kind of save a little bit of time. So, if you have questions about that, just ask in the comments and I'll try to help you. But it's pretty simple. Just follow the guide, uh, and of course the link is in the description, like I said. So the next thing we want to cover are macros. 
So before we head out to the newbie yard, there's a few useful macros that we should create. These are just little script buttons that make the game a bit easier and less clicky. And you can really go nuts with them, but I'll just cover uh, some of the basic ones that, that I like to use. So the first one, here's the little action bar. You can see it has different tabs in it. And you want to go to the socials page, and you already have some by default. And you want to go to two, and then right click here and to create a new one. The first one we're going to create is called location. This works with sense heading in that it tells you the actual numeric location of your character on the current zone map. So it's going to give you the north, the north and south, the east and west, and the z coordinates. And the z coordinates are largely ignored, so we can ignore them. So if we do that, you can see I spam it five times because when you're about to give up your death rattle and you don't know where you are, uh, you want to spam it a little bit so when you die and come back you can scroll up uh, and then see see it more easily. So that's why I like to spam it five times. Now hand in hand with the location uh, macro is going to be the corpse macro which simply uh, draws the closest of your corpses to you. And no, we're not doing a look, we are doing corpse. So you can drag your corpse to a safe place so you can loot your corpse because this is EverQuest Classic and all of your items stay on your dead body for one week and then poof. So corpse retrieval is really a thing here on EverQuest Classic. So the other couple things I want to do are I like to hide the corpses all around me because I just find it less immersive seeing a bunch of dead bodies scattered everywhere. So I do uh, hide all. It's going to be slash hide corpse all. So what this does, it hides all the corpses that are currently in your view. So it completely removes them from your uh, user interface. Next thing I want to do is hide corpse looted. So now, firstly I clear all the current corpses. Now I'm going to clear every corpse that I've already looted. To sort of keep things uh, neat and tidy. Now on occasion you're going to need to re-enable that. So I just do hide none. And that's just going to be hide corpse none. And if you click these you'll see the system text. Yep, I'm hiding all the corpses. Now any corpse you loot, except your own, will be hidden when you finish looting, but leave items on the corpse, and then if I want to clear that out, it says, well, we're going to make them all visible again. So, that's that. Now the other neat thing about being a dark elf is that you get, let's see, we want sense heading here, and we'll do find wound, actually I want to do hide here, hide bind wound and fishing because I like fishing. So dark elves as a racial get the hide ability. What this does is you try to hide and if your attempt is successful no living thing can see you. Now be careful because undead things can still see you because they have completely different uh, senses. So if I hit this gentleman here, Jarex, and I see he, that he can see me and he kindly considers me if I hide, and then, now, he regards me indifferently. It means he liked me before, but now he can't see me because I'm well hidden. So a lot of times, you might be out in the forest or wherever, hunting, and there aren't very convenient NPCs around to see if your hide has been successful. So what I do is I just target myself. Slash target Relinar. So now, if I'm out in the middle of the woods, and I want to need to know if my hide is successful because I want to be safe while I need to go away from the keyboard or something, I can just hit the self button. And you can see that I don't target myself because I can't see myself. It's kind of a weird mechanic, but... So if I unhide and then hide again and I fail, let's see. 
Oh, I was actually successful again. Let's see if I get a fail for hide. It does have a begin to hide. See, now I can target myself, which means my hide failed. And I can prove that because Jarek's here kindly considers me. So that is just an interesting thing to do with uh, the Dark Elves, or let's see, who else has hide as a racial? I think it's Dark Elves, Wood Elves, and Halflings also have hide. The thing I like to do, it's very useful, it's called the Who macro, and I do Who target, and then I also do a guild status. A lot of times if you're in a group or something, um, it would kind of be a long, tedious process to ask everybody what classes they are. Some people aren't paying attention or whatever. So I just do who. So if I hit F1 to target myself and I do a who, it can say, well, I'm a level 1 warrior and I'm a dark elf. And I am not currently in a guild. So this is just a quick kind of macro to get the status of people. The other thing I wanted to cover actually is in, if I go here to the EQ button, and I go to options, I want to go to keybinds. I just want to mention something. Uh, 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 targeting. Right here, toggle last two targets. So a lot of the times when you're in a group and you're fighting, or you could be solo, uh, you may be tanking multiple enemies, or you may be healing multiple allies, or you could be, maybe you're an enchanter, and you're trying to control multiple targets. Uh, if I left click, left click on Jarex here, and then left click on Narex, you can see my toggle last two targets is the tilde key. And so I can just simply, quickly, toggle between these two last targets that I chose, which is, uh, just has many different uses, uh, like I just mentioned. Another thing I like to do in keybinds, if you go to hotbars, you can see hot buttons 1 through 10. These represent here button set number 1 in the left, uh, the bottom left corner here. And so what I like to do is take my sense heading, and I'm going to replace bash because I actually don't have the bash skill yet. And if I press button 2, or use W, I want to trigger a sense heading. Now the W is in red because W is also in use as something else, namely to walk forward. Um, but that's great, we're going to keep that just now. So now you can see, every time I walk forward, I also do a sense heading check. So it's going to help us to build this skill up from one, I already got number two here, from one to two hundred is the maximum. So, let's see, the other thing I like to do is take my range attack and put it here, which reminds me, as a warrior tank, I'm going to be pulling things, so when I pull something, I want to let my group know that something is coming that we can obliterate, so I like to do it uh, left brace, space, percentage, T, space, right brace. That will tell my group that, hey, I've fired my bow at something, it's coming to attack us, so get ready. And here's the hide, we don't need that there. And get rid of all those buttons, because they're useless. And I like to put things down here like this way. Alright, so. I think that covers everything I wanted to do for macros. Well, I guess you can also cover, um, if you're in a group of something, let's go over the assist macro. So what you want to do is target your tank, or your main assist, whoever your group assigns. So you can say, say for example, for it's me, because I'm the tank. So this assist macro will, will basically give you the target of what I'm fighting. So when you're working with a group, this is very important. You don't want to just pick random targets if there are multiple opponents fighting your group. You want to be very specific and focus all your fire on one target and then 
burn them down, and then you'll pick a new target. So this is just a quick macro to do just that. However, I'm the tank, so I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to be telling my group, which is how I do group tell by slash g, that this is a target to assist on in case there was any uh, confusion about it. So I'm going to say assist on my current target. As a tank, that's what I'm going to do. So I think that covers everything. So for the UI setup, I've covered load Duxy UI. The cool thing about this is you can lock all your windows in place. You really want to do that because you can misclick and drag a window somewhere and then you have to realign it and I have OCD so that drives me nuts. So I tend to lock all of my windows down. You can see all of these are locked and we can go through and see that all of these are locked and you can unlock them if you want. Um, let's see. Oh, one thing I like to use, I can hit Alt O to open those options again. I like to use tell windows. Use tell windows, this button here. So if I tell somebody, you know, somebody, blah blah blah, generally it's going to come up right into this center chat here. But if I send somebody to tell, or they send me to tell, if I use tell windows, it's going to pop up, and I have my tell window set up to pop up over here. So that way, if someone sends me uh, a tell, I'll never miss it. So every time a new person sends me a tell, I'll get a new pop-up window. And everything I uh, send back and forth to a single person will end up in that same window. So it's really nice and organized and OCD, yes, so that's me. Okay. So the other thing uh, is your friend list. You do slash friend, you can see. Ah, oh, you have no friends, how sad. To do a friend, you can just say friend and then the name. And then the cool thing, if you log in and you want to see who of your friends are online, you can say who are friend. And yes, I do put myself on the list so I can see out of all my friends online in my current character, which of them line up, and then we can group up and do something. So, my friend list grows pretty well, and don't be worried about asking permission permission to be on a friend list. It, uh, this is an old classic game, it doesn't work that way. So, if you group with people that you like, you can just add them to your friend list and see if there's a round the next time you want to group up. So it just makes it uh, really easy. So, sense heading keybind we already covered, and the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is the slash tt command. This means tell target. So if someone has a name that you... it's hard to type out, or if someone's in the group you want to send a private message to, you can just target them and do a slash tt. And, uh, this stuff... And it will send the tell to them. Of course, I'm sending it to myself, so the game is like, are you talking to yourself? You must be crazy. So that's kind of like the little macros and kind of UI setups that I wanted to talk about. Now, before we head out to the newbie yard and start slaying everything in our path, we should go over the consider command. Okay? We need to consider the consider mechanic. Whenever you are ready to fight something, always consider your target's strength by using the consider command. This command is so integral to the game, it has its own mapping, and that is the C key. So if you just hit the C key, it gives me this message. Relinar regards you indifferently. Okay, so what does this message mean? The consider command gives you a simple report on how strong your target is relative to your current character. There are two parts of the report, the color and the faction. So let's cover the colors first. If your target is green, then they are considerably lower level than you, and you generally won't get experience for killing those kinds of things. However, you still get the drops, and occasionally you do still get experience. It depends on the, the formula for experience giving, which we're not going to cover. So green is easy. Dark blue, they are lower level than you, but they're still good for experience because they pose you a pretty good challenge. 
white means they are exactly the same level as you. So I'm considering myself, and of course I'm level 1, so I'm going to be white. Yellow means they are one to two levels above you, and if you fight them, you're likely going to lose. And red means they are three or more levels above you, and there's no way to tell if they are three levels or 25 levels above you. If you fight a red con, you are most definitely going to lose. There are some really real circumstances where you can win, but on the whole, if it's red, you're dead. So generally, dark blue are the monsters you want to fight. They have the, the best risk-reward ratio, not too difficult to defeat, and they won't beat up your face too much either. So we want to concentrate on fighting blue things. Now, I'm level 1, so everything is going to be white. So in the future, uh, as things get more and more difficult, uh, the level ranges for the consider colors uh, greatly change. If you're really interested in that, you can go to the wiki and look on the, I think there's a game mechanics link, if you want to look at that, have at it. The second part of the consider report is the faction standing. So this means the regards you indifferently part. So there are two faction standings you want to look out for when you consider something. See people running around, because it is an MMO. Uh, the first thing is there are two factions that basically attack your face as soon as they see you. Those are scowls at you, ready to attack, and glares at you threateningly. The difference is glares at you gives you a little more leeway in terms of the distance between you and the NPC. So if something scowls at you, that means as soon as it's seen you, it's going to attack you. If it glares at you, you have to get a little bit closer. It sees you, it knows you're there, but you got to get a little bit closer before it starts attacking you. So you have a little more leeway with glares. The remaining, fashions, the remaining faction standings are glowers, apprehensive, indifferent, amiable, kindly, warmly, and ally. These standings are varying degrees of will not attack your face on sight. So in that respect, they don't really matter. It just means that you're, you're safe to walk by them. They're not going to attack you if you get too close. So that being said, let's head out to the newbie yard and do some combat. And you can see, as I am hitting W to go forward, the sense heading button is also getting depressed. I am practicing my skill, and here's a, here's a good example of a corpse on the ground. I want to test my hide all macro that I made. Corpse gone, corpse here, corpse gone, corpse here. I just find it more immersive that I don't see people's corpses lying around. Also, some people try to get cute, and they make like, you know, 25 corpses, and they spell out a word or something, and I just find that annoying. So I just remove them all from view and it makes me happier. So now that we have the preliminaries out of the way, it's time to start the grind. So we're going to head to the new yard and start slaying. Since you have no backpack space, uh, meaning no backpacks, we basically want to collect things that are snackable. And of course, loading times are classic, so we're going to have to deal with those. So we want things that stack, and we want the things that stack and then sell enough to buy a backpack. That's going to be about six gold. So some of the things we want to collect are snake fangs, snake eggs, snake scales, weapons and weapons and armor that drop from skeletons, and any kind of insect or hello insect or uh, bug or spider kind of parts. Those are things we're going to collect and going to sell, and we want to try to get a backpack as soon as possible. So, yes, Nariak is not a big city, however it does have three zones, and then we have to zone out to the newbie yard, which is called Nectulos Forest. So there's also things that we want to collect, but we do not want to sell to vendors. 
These are going to be our money makers. We want to collect bone chips, spider ling silks, spider silks, and quality hides. Now unfortunately hides do not stack, but we want to keep them if possible. The ruined hides are worthless. The ones we want we have the word quality in their names. So it's going to be low quality, medium quality, and high quality. Those are the ones we want to save if possible. Because we are going to use them later uh, as part of our money making start here on the Project 1999 EverQuest Classic server. So we're going to keep killing and collecting everything in sight and pretty much we're going to have try to get backpacks as soon as possible. And maybe once we get four, five, maybe six backpacks and we can start filling them with all the things that we do not want to sell to vendors, that's pretty much going to be our goal. And I'm wondering if my game has crashed. So, we're going to kill skeletons, snakes, spiders, wolves, and eventually, maybe around level 5, we can start taking on some bears. So we're going to try to get to level 5, maybe level 6. Level 6 actually makes more sense, because I can also go back to my warrior trainer and train bash and dodge at level 6. So, oh, I didn't crash, that's good. So let's actually do some combat. And we're probably going to die, because we are weak, level 1 player. Let's see, we're going to con this Shadow Wolf. Glares at me threateningly, and he's red. So we want to stay away from Shadow Wolves. And I want to get rid of these corpses. Bye-bye. So, we are just starting out. We are weak, our skills are abysmal, and we're probably going to lose against this Moss Stake, because there's no hand-holding in the classic EverQuest Project 1999 server. This is emulating the original classic experience all the way up to Velios, which is now available. So actually, I rather handily defeated this Moss Snake. So, let's get to the looting. And basically, after every auto attack, so I hit 1 to start my auto attack here, I do a sense heading, taunt, and kick. It's kind of get into the rhythm. Oh, jackpot. Lots of stuff that stacks. So I kind of get into a rhythm and it becomes a bit therapeutic. So that's just what I do. And we have a black wolf. He glares at us and he's level 1, so we're going to attack. And maybe he'll drop something nice for us. You can see down here, my skills are increasing very slowly. My kick is level 1, my slashing is 6. Yes, we are pretty pitiful at this point. But keep at it, we're going to progress. Actually, getting to level 5, level 6 in this game is probably the hardest thing we're going to do. And, ooh, things that stack, and this black wolf skin, which isn't a hide we want, however, it sells for about a gold, so we will gladly take that. Now, one thing about these spiderlings and spiders is that enemies in this game can be social. So if I'm fighting this spiderling, who, by the way, is indifferent to me, and he's higher level, so I'm not going to start combat. So if I'm fighting the spiderling, and another spider comes, another spider or spiderling comes wandering by, they're going to join the fight against me. These fire beetles are the same way, they're also social. So you gotta be smart and careful about what you pull and where you pull and where you fight. So we are in the newbie yard. It's not gonna generally affect us too much until we're, we gain a couple levels and we start beating up spiders and fire beetles rather handily, probably around level three, four, maybe five. But first things first, we gotta get to level two. So we are gonna fight snakes and skeletons, because those are level 1. Skeletons also drop the cloth armor and weapons that sell for good gold, so hopefully we can get some of those. So our next goal is to get to level 6, and then head back to our trainer. And I think, ooh, the skeleton just attacked me because he scowls. That's okay, because he's one of our targets. Maybe he'll 
drop some of those juicy bone chips. Oh, we cloth, some bone chips, some food, which is funny because he can't eat anything. And... Now one note, if you play, if you created a character that is not from Nariak, and you decide to hunt in Nectulo's forest, all these guards that run around, I think they're level 20, 25, they will attack your face on sight. They will also kill still from you. So if I'm fighting the skeleton, and he comes by, he is going to kill the skeleton, and I'm going to get no experience and no loot. So you got to be wary of where you're fighting. Now, Nectulus is one of my favorite places to start a character. I like this little mountain here. I call it Spider Hill, because I wonder if there's going to be tons of things just crawling across here, usually spiders. You can basically get a good vantage point of the surrounding area and where the monsters are to fight. So you can basically stay around this hill in front of the entrance, or you can run. Let's see, what is this over here? I think this is southwest, if I remember correctly. There's going to be another log. Call, and we call that, that's actually not the log I'm looking for, it's over here, and this is called the newbie log. So if someone says, hey, I'm at the newbie log, do you want a group, or whatever, uh, they're talking about the newbie log near the zone over here, and you can see it in the distance there. And you can see a lot of low-level critters running around, and we want to kill these snakes. And you can see our health is low already. And health regenerates very slowly here. It's not like the modern MMOs, where you just can do non-stop fighting, uh, where mobs are just speed bumps. No, this game has depth. So you have to pay attention and rest up. So, keep killing everything in sight. Do everything you can. Oh, maybe I can demonstrate what happens when you die, because it looks like I'm gonna die. So, that was close, but if I was gonna die, I'm gonna hit locate here. So if I died, I'm gonna respawn near the entrance, and I'm gonna have to find my way back here using uh, north and south. Uh, I'm definitely gonna die now, and I'm going to be able to demonstrate that. Because I don't think I'm gonna win this fight. Wolves are social with each other as well, so any other wolves run by, they're going to join the fight, and I'm definitely going to die. It's alright, if you die, don't get discouraged, it's part of the game. You don't actually lose any experience until you're level 5 and above, so level 1 through 4, you kind of get a free pass. But then it gets real and hardcore after that point. And this is embarrassing, just kill me already. So where was I? I was basically 1200 minus 250. So remember that. We're going to die and respawn and then come back and get our paltry little items back. So now I can show you how to use sense heading and location in the corpse macro which is going to come in handy. The low times are for real, because this is classic. A feeling that the EverQuest Classic client just doesn't not like Windows 10. I seem to get very, very long load times where they weren't very long before. I have to look into that and see if I can fix it. Finally, 
So I've respawned. What is my current location? I am 2000 minus 775. I need to get to 1200 minus 250. So the first number is north and south. So north is positive, south is negative, so I need to go south. And the second number is east and west. East is positive and west is negative, so I need to go southeast of here. Oh, it's basically over here. And things are going to attack me, and I have no weapons, so I gotta be careful. So, I should be heading uh, southeast, excuse me, because I need to go to minus 250, so I need to go positive. So, this should be south west. Here's the newbie log. There's my body. Now say I died in a very contested area with a lot of angry mobs around. I can use my corpse drag to go somewhere safe and then loot my corpse. For all the wonderful items that I have so far. Joy. So all right, I think that covers everything I wanted to cover. So I'm going to do the grind, get to level six, collect all the bone chips and the spider silks. Ooh, there's a bear. He is yellow. I guess we'll leave him alone for now. And all the other things I'm going to vendor, and then get some backpacks. And then we'll meet up with Relinar and see what his progress is like. So until then, Safe travels. Come on, snake. Give me your fangs. Oh, I really needed your fangs. Alright, until then, safe travels.